Hello and welcome to slide review. So today we are looking at the challenge cases that are associated with our GI3, uh, looking at colon, appendix, and anal lesions. So as always, we just had the standard disclaimer. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, uh, please feel free to add them to either the comments below uh, on the YouTube, or um, they can also be either a direct message on Twitter. So I have both Twitter handles below here. Okay, and as I said, we're just going over the challenge cases. Um, so we're not going to go over the entire lecture, but I will put a link to the lecture video and these slides um, in the description, and we have fixed the slide that was out of place during the lecture, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and we have 15 cases to go over. Um, some of these are examples of things that we looked at, some are extra things, so um, all of these, I think, to some degree, are very challenging. Uh, so let's just take a look and dive right in. So case one, what we're looking at is appendix. Okay, we have a lot of cross sections of appendix. We have some helpful dots, which is always nice. Um, so in the interest of time, we go in here. What we can see is that we definitely have an appendicitis, right? We have, um, this is our appendiceal mucosa, and we have so much inflammation going on here. Um, a lot of this is, is lymphoid tissue that is uh, just going a bit crazy. Not seeing neutrophils for the most part, it's lymphoplasmacytic. You can check the wall as well to see what's going on there. And again, uh, there's maybe some scattered eosinophils, but it's mostly lymphoplasmacytic. So to me, this is giving more of a picture of a chronic appendicitis. Um, let's see if there's anything better in here. And this looks very similar. Again, we have some EOs, but mostly lymphocytes and plasma cells. You can always pick out the plasma cells. Okay. Um, but the interesting part of this case is over here. Okay, so the first thing you notice is that it's towards the sorosal surface, and these are somewhat irregular appearing glands compared to what we have been seeing in the GI tract. And that's because, surprise, this is not GI, this is in fact GYN. So what we have here is a somewhat columnar pseudostratified epithelium. Here it looks maybe a little more cuboidal. And we have hemorrhage around this. Um, not seeing any hemocytorin lane macrophages, but that's okay because that would imply maybe a more chronic uh, process or, or an old bleed. Um, but having all, all this blood within the stroma here, um, this is endometriosis. Okay, these are endometrial glands on the surface of the appendix, the serosal surface, okay? Um, and this is something that you can see anywhere within uh, the GYN tract, obviously the GI uh, with the appendix or colon, and sometimes you can even see things like this, like um, on the peritoneum or, or liver itself, okay? So this is appendicitis with endometriosis, and that's what makes this case really interesting. Case two, we're still looking at appendix, and what we notice is this is much larger than this, okay? So if we consider this to be normal, at least in thickness, uh, what we note is that even though there's still like a, a lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate under here, it's not as profound as what we have seen, or as pronounced, I guess, as what we have seen in other uh, cases. If we look at the epithelium, it looks pretty happy. Okay, occasional lymphocytes are totally normal. Remember, uh, the appendix has 
lymphoid tissue within it. So that's all normal. But we have all this stuff in the middle. Hard to make out what it is. In the end, it's not even necessary for you to figure that out. Looks like maybe it's some fibrin, but again, as I said, that's not necessary. Um, but what we're missing as I go along here, and I hope you're appreciating, is uh, there is no mucosal surface, okay? It's, it's just gone. There's maybe a little flattened here, maybe <laughs> a couple of cells there, and we see some of it is sloughed off into all this debris. So the point of this case is just to show you uh, what impaction can look like. Oh, it looks like maybe we got some there. And again, it doesn't look too too bad. It's attenuated and flattened. But uh, you can imagine that if you have something filling up the lumen and expanding uh, the appendix to this size, which is quite large, um, that what would happen is instead of having all the folds and everything, it stretches out and smooths out. So you get loss of all those folds and uh, your epithelium goes from being nice and tall and happy to being flattened and may even slough off like what we're seeing here. So this is impaction involving the appendix. Case three. So again, uh, this looks like just GI. So you'd have to know that what they gave you here um, like where they are. Um, so still most likely within uh, cecum or appendix. Okay, we can still see this colonic mucosa. For the purposes of this, I just labeled this as appendix to make it easier. And we see our friend again. So this is Enterobius vermicularis. Look at all those eggs. Actually, that might be vegetable matter, but this is definitely worm. And if we go over here, see here's the adult worm. Okay. So just another quick example of what you can see with pinworm. Well, those must be eggs. They just look a little different. They look more ovoid round, but uh, maybe this is within a worm itself. Um, okay. I think the example within the lecture is, is much better. It gives you a much better sense of uh, that worm in particular. Um, so, okay, Enterobius vermicularis, also known as pinworm or threadworm. Case four. Hopefully immediately you can appreciate the beads on a string, pearls on a string appearance. Okay, we are still within the appendix. And it looks like we probably have something going on here. And it looks like we probably still have a little bit of lumen here. So let's just take a look. And we do. Again, this mostly looks lymphoplasmocytic, scattered eosinophils and a little hemorrhagic, but that's not too uncommon. We're waiting for it to load. And of course there is a helpful dot, but this is the area that really catches my eye at low power. And here we go, granulomas, okay. So all these epithelioid histiocytes, it's admixed with some neutrophils. We have a whole bunch of ants in here. And if we go through to where their dots were, what they're highlighting here looks to me like there's more transmural inflammation. We have a giant cell up here, which again, um, remember the granulomatous appendicitis does like to be transmural as well. Um, but again, not really appreciating maybe some necrosis here. Um, nothing widespread. 
And these can have some caseating necrosis. So um, also remember that these tend to be limited to the appendix and they occur in about 2% of appendixes um, just being taken out for whatever reason. Okay, so granulomatous appendicitis, case five. Um, so this one has a little more of a low power diagnosis. So just to orient, what we have here is um, you imagine that the lumen of the appendix is going this way. Uh, we have muscle on both sides, so it's maybe not the best cross section. And here we have the thick muscular layer. And what we notice is these guys down here, okay? So if we zoom in, what we see is we have this muscle layer that goes around and kind of just disappears at this point, okay? So muscle up here, and then it disappears, it's gone. And we just have a little bit of like connective tissue and fat. And here is the lumen of our appendix. We come up this side and we start seeing that muscle again. That is abscess. <laughs> so all this is abscess formation, um, which you can see with this. Again, abscess, seeing how deep that is. Um, but what this is highlighting here, and I think is a very good example, um, this is diverticulosis um, involving the appendix. Okay, so... Um, just something to keep an eye out on. I know this case is hard to orient yourself, but just remember it's kind of going this way. Okay, so you, uh, your proximal section would be over here um, because you have like this abscess formation which could either be related to the diverticula or could actually be part of the things that's inciting it. I think it's hard to say because it is filling up areas of uh, diverticula within this case, but this is just to show you what a diverticula looks like. Um, so a, a true diverticula goes uh, through the muscle layer, whereas a pseudo diverticula or false diverticula has all four layers go together. So instead of where we saw the muscle disappearing, you'd have the muscle continuing underneath, okay? But it would still have the appearance of an outpouching. Again, uh, I think this is our last case of appendix, um, and we do have helpful dots, okay? Um, but this is just to show you something that you can see anywhere in the GI tract, and you can kind of see it scattered everywhere, but this is the best area here. So what we have are these intense purple fish scale crystals. Okay, these are crystals. Um, and these are actually K-exalate crystals. They have this very distinct purple fish scale appearance. Um, there are other things that can give you crystals. And the one that looks most similar to K-exalate is Savellamere. Um, but Savellamere, instead of being purple like this, it's either yellow or pink. And uh, an intense pink or yellow. Um, but so... Just keep in mind this this itself can elicit uh, an, uh, an inflammatory response. Um, so something to keep an eye out for. K7, so we are no longer in appendix. Okay, it looks like maybe we're looking at colon. But not too much going on. Maybe some edema, but this is a biopsy, so. Remember, you can always see edema with biopsies just because of how they're taken, but we start seeing a lot of hemorrhage in here. Maybe some reactive change, but very mild. Not too much going on there. another piece actually two more pieces okay and we're kind of seeing the same thing here so we're seeing like reactive changes up in um, the superficial epithelium as well as uh, some bleeding 
but we're not appreciating like ulceration or uh, collagen dep uh, deposition. Just kind of the same thing over and over. Um, I'm also not appreciating like any active colitis. Just lots of blood. Um, so this is most consistent then with like an ischemic colitis. We're not really seeing like um, microthrombi because everything here is like definite like red cells. Um, but th that's what fits most with this is uh, an ischemic colitis. All right, this is a very tricky case. Okay, so we have two sections of the same thing. And what makes it really tricky is that we have a lack of surface, okay? We have some neutrophils, okay? There, there are still some ants in here. We have a lymphoplasmocytic background, but everything's for the most part touching the base. And there's definitely some reactive change within the crypts, okay? We don't wanna go too far down into the crypts because remember they get scarier as you go uh, closer to the base. But there's some ballooning maybe, some degenerative type changes like here. But here there's a little bit of surface. And again, we see some of that ballooning degeneration, a lot more neutrophils going on here. So I think this is probably one of the better areas giving you a little more of a hint as to what's going on here. And we just see everything's just eating away at things. Um, I, see if we can find an even better area. A lot of this looks so similar. Um, and as I said, these cases are extremely difficult. There is some crypt disarray. Okay, but this could also be related to uh, the process that's going on here. I'm not seeing anything that looks dysplastic. I'm just trying to see if I can find a better place. Maybe some of this. This is cellular debris. Kind of feels like I'm playing guess what I'm thinking, but... Uh, Little more cellular debris, okay. And this doesn't look like it'll be more promising. Um, but again, just these are relatively normal with maybe some reactive change. And then we get into areas where there's some more uh, degenerative type areas. So what this case is trying to show you is a, um, This looks, I don't know, collagen looks a little funny. <laughs> I think it's too, too much. Uh, don't know that that was really like a focal feature we're seeing, but this piece kind of catches my eye. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little more here. Looks, looks more edematous, like it was pulled away there. Hmm. Okay, maybe a little more here where it's kind of pushing things down, which would explain a little bit of why we're not seeing uh, surface epithelium. So what we're likely looking at here, I think we have pseudomembrane colitis, but I think maybe there's also some component of collagenous colitis. So when we mash those together, usually we say something like uh, pseudomembranous collagenous colitis or um, collagenous colitis with pseudomembranes. Again, very difficult case. Case nine. So two sections of the same thing. This I'm telling you up here already just kind of looks like schmutz. And that's because it is. So really you have like two areas to look at. And it's not giving you a whole heck of a lot. Uh, you have a little bit of lymphocytic 
proliferation there. This is maybe a little more interesting. Okay, these are glands, but you can see that there's definite disarray. It looks like maybe there's increased uh, collagen in the background, like maybe this is a process that has been going on for a long time. Um, but the inflammation that's within the background even here is too much. The crypts themselves, even though they're in disarray, don't look too unhappy. Um, remember, these are mitotic figures. Definitely still plasma cells, okay? But this is very, very loose. And since we don't know what area of the colon we are in, so VOs too, um, it's very difficult to say if this is too much for the area or not, but lots and lots of plasma cells. There's like one neutrophil. <laughs> Let's see about the other piece down here. So again, eosinophils, plasma cells, we've got disarray. And we can't tell from this if this is uh, a surface uh, involvement, like um, simply like mucosa, or if this is transmural because this is a superficial biopsy. But this is definitely a chronic colitis. Um, I kind of want to go back to this piece down here because I'm wondering, these look kind of histiocytic, so I'm wondering if we have like a vague granuloma formation, maybe. Um, which if that's the case, then even though this is a chronic colitis with some mild architectural distortion, um, this would put us more in like the, more typically in like the, the Crohn disease family. Um, but you'd kind of have to know the history of the patient to determine, um, if this is truly Crohn's, um, it doesn't look like lymphocytic or collagenous colitis, so I'm not thinking like a microscopic colitis. All these lymphocytes, I mean, like this is definitely like a chronic colitis picture. So if hard pressed, this is most consistent with uh, Crohn's. Um, but again, I think you need the history. Case 10, oh, look, we have a lovely helpful hint up here looks like. Doesn't look like there's much down here, so that makes it easier to determine what they're trying to highlight. And okay, so we have some colonic mucosa. Looks relatively nondescript. There is an increased lymphoplasmacytic background. And these cells, like they're they're too big. They're too big and they're they're dark. Like we start comparing them to other cells. Lots of plasma cells. There are some eosinophils scattered in here, but mostly plasmacytic. And here's our friends. There's some neutrophils. But you see how these are maturing and we get areas like this where they're they're larger i mean these guys are close to the surface that's worrisome and we haven't looked at this piece so again i i recognize that there's this lymphoplasmacytic background there's this loss of maturity as we're, these few areas that we can tell are at the surface. This kind of stuff is hard to tell because you don't know exactly where you are. Um, and that's just the nature of biopsies. It, it can, they can be impossible to, to orient properly. 
sometimes I just don't get a big enough bite. But this is this is way too much. Like we can tell, like this is surface. It's crowded. Uh, the cells are large. They're hyperchromatic. Hyper Sorry. Um, and like it's just seas and seas of plasma cells. <laughs> um, so even though I can't see the muscular mucosae, I don't think we have any that we've been able to appreciate. Um, whereas the previous case looked more like a crone, this looks more consistent with ulcerative colitis. Um, and I think we have low grade dysplasia here. Um, this is a mitotic figure. It's not necessarily too high, but instead of having like single layers or a couple layers, like it's just, it's way too much. It's way too dark. The cells are big and irregular at the surface and we don't like that. Um, so this is most consistent with inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis uh, with low grade dysplasia. Okay. Case 11. We have more helpful hints, so we're just going to go in, since we have two pieces, and just kind of see what we see. So again, uh, lymphoplasmocytic, it seems to be a recurring theme, lots of apoptotic bodies, okay? So when you see lots of apoptotic bodies, um, you want to think about injury. And you can see that we're down at the crypts and there's lots of them. Um, and we'll go to their dot and see, but this already has a somewhat characteristic appearance. Let's see if we can find anything else. Um, so seeing all these basal apoptotic bodies, I'm thinking drug toxicity. And one drug in particular likes to have basal apoptosis. But the other thing we're looking for is mitotic activity. And okay, so that's why they dotted. I see that now. So we have all these mitotic figures here, all this basal apoptosis. This is actually a really nice picture for this because um, this is what you're really looking for with this toxicity. And this is colchicine toxicity. Um, and so colchicine doesn't do this normally. It doesn't normally uh, induce epithelial apoptosis. And um, what it's doing with the mitotic figures, like the reason we're looking for mitotic figures is uh, it mimics um, like how um, uh, certain chemotherapy reagents will um, halt microtubule um, formation or um, shortening. So um, processes involving microtubules and mitoses, um, colchicine can actually mimic those changes. So you can see all these apoptotic figures as well as mitotic figures. So this is actually really nice for this. Um, again, you only see this with colchicine toxicity. You won't see this with patients who are just on colchicine but not having toxic effects. Okay, so this is case 12. And we have a relatively unhappy looking segment of GI. So here's our mucosal surface. And these areas look relatively normal. Um, but you get into areas like this maybe this, uh, where we're losing a lot of the um, mucus. Okay, so see here they're rather plump and then here it's uh, too pink. Ooh, that looks a little unhappy. Very large and reactive looking. Again, basal apoptosis. with this loss of 
uh, mucus. You can kind of see that in, in more than one, like there's quite a few of them uh, that have those features. And that doesn't really look like much of anything. So this is another um, medication induced injury, most likely. Uh, and the one that comes to mind is mycophenolate. Um, so mycophenolate mofetil is known for having like the decrease in mucus protection. Um, it will have things like, uh, you can sometimes see like this really eosinophilic debris in there, which I don't think we're really appreciating uh, in this case. Um, there's uh, the regenerative atypia, which we were seeing. So that's where you had like those very uh, large reactive looking cells, uh, apoptotic bodies. So here we go. Here's our regenerative type nuclei. So this is most consistent with mycophenolate colitis. Um, but again, very difficult. This is case 13. Uh, so they gave us two very generous sections of colon. And the first thing we notice is that it appears um, rather thickened, at least uh, the mucosa and submucosa here appears thickened and maybe a bit here. So let's try this piece uh, since it's less overwhelming, I think, and for the interest of time. And the first thing I'm really appreciating is besides uh, we have, it looks like maybe denuded epithelium. Uh, it, I don't want to jump into saying ulcer or abscess right away. It could very well be, um, but it just doesn't have that look per se. Um, but what I am appreciating is there's a lot of collagen deposition in uh, within the lamina propria, within the, the superficial submucosa. Okay. Maybe thickened, I don't know, hard to say. Looks a little more normal, so let's try going back this way. And these vessels look thickened. Um, see if we can find nuclear features, or well, maybe a little bit. Um, so there is a little bit of nuclear irregularity and some vacuolization within the nuclei. Here, where it kind of looks a little more ballooned. It's a little irregular, but not scary looking. Um, more of that collagen deposition. What would be really nice is if we could see like a sclerotic vessel or something like that. Um, so what I'm looking for and what I think, maybe we have one here. Maybe it could be collapsed too, it's hard to tell, but like that's a thickened vessel. Um, what we have here, to me, this looks like a radiation effect. Um, so this is very likely a radiation associated colitis. And here I'm a little more convinced maybe that we have some ulceration, it's a little more activity. Um, but if you look at the the few crypts that are remaining, they actually don't look too bad. But I think all those other changes, that's what this is most consistent with is uh, radiation colitis. Case 14, so kind of like the, the previous case, we this looks more like normal thickness, again, normal thickness over here, and then we have this. And to orient you, it's kind of flipped upside down. 
So here's our cirrhosis surface, here's our mucosal surface, and hopefully the first thing that should catch your eye besides the thickness um, is that we have too much blue going on on the cirrhosis surface, but let's just take a look at this. And even though we're missing some of the surface, it's relatively nondescript. We have some hemorrhage in here and looks like abscess. See all these little ants. Mixed inflammation. And what we're missing is the cirrhosal surface. Okay. So we have our muscle, then we have some adipose with vessels, and there should be cirrhosa here, and there's not. Instead, we have um, this fibrinopurulent exudate, uh, which grossly you'd be able to see. It would be very uh, dull, possibly even adhes to other structures, okay? And looks like it's just continuing all the way through. So what we have here with this relatively benign appearing mucosal surface is this is a perforation or sign of a perforation. Um, and because of this thick muscle layer, which is obviously hypertrophied, but otherwise looks relatively bland, like there's no uh, atypical looking uh, nuclei or anything like that, like they're all, um, very thin, we have uh, somewhat blunted ends, They're not super pointed, but these are just benign smooth muscle cells. Um, so this is actually a case of delayed perforation. So very likely this patient had some sort of uh, colitis or it could even have been like ischemic colitis um, and it resolved but eventually there was uh, irritation that uh, resulted in this serositis and the acute inflammation is really what clues you into uh, there being a perforation. So chances are there is a section in this case somewhere that actually shows that perforation, that transmural uh, involvement. I, we just don't have it here. And case 15, this is our last case. So this is a very common finding. And what you should see immediately is that even though we have colon, we have all these empty spaces. Not too much to say about this. So you're going to have lots of histiocytes and giant cells around these areas. They do appear cystic. And your colonic mucosa can have any range of anything involved with it. However, um, even though this is the thing that catches your eye, uh, this is something that most often is introduced during the procedure. So this is uh, pneumatosis coli. And the reason this happens is um, not only will they insufflate the colon when they're doing uh, endoscopy, so they're, they're blowing it up with air so that they can see around it, um, they also sometimes will inject saline or air underneath areas of mucosa when they are biopsying. So this is actually what you're seeing. Um, there are um, agents that they can inject that sometimes you can see, but most often they dissolve out with, uh, uh, with processing. Um, but air is the most common and it always has this very characteristic cystic appearance. So it looks like it's something that's supposed to be there, but it really isn't, it's just more reactive than anything else. And there's really like nothing else going on in the colon in this case, so uh, that's case 15. And here we're gonna just show the list of cases. So again, for the Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, it's most consistent with these, but you really need the history uh, to go there. Um, and same with the pills, like there will be a history somewhere of the patient taking these things. Um, 
but hopefully this was really helpful. Again, um, if you have any questions, please let, let me know either in the comment or, or on Twitter. And uh, if you like this video, please hit like. Uh, if you'd want to be notified of when we have new content out, hit that subscribe button. And we will see you next week with another slide review.